here with the Ford Model A, and we already have an admirer. Hi. <laughs> This is awesome. This was the successor to the Model T. Definitely uh, has seen better days, but my friend Cole here is an expert mechanic and he knows how to restore, maintain cars better than just about anybody I know. And apparently he keeps this thing running very well. It's uh, a car that actually sees use, which I admire. Some people might say this car belongs in a museum, but no, I really, really admire seeing these cars on the road because what were cars made to do? Drive and be driven. So <laughs> this Model A is no exception. And uh, can't wait. First time driving in a car this old. I think the next oldest car I was ever in was, uh, geez, whatever model Grease Lightning was, late 40s Mercury. <laughs> I, early 50s? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, but this is something else. Proof that, you know, the car's almost 100 years old and it still runs. Runs quite well, actually. Let's uh, see how she rides. How old are these tires? You're saying that you've towed people with this and had over 400 pounds of stuff in it? Yeah, I mean, then more. You know, I'm 25 on a good day, probably more now. Um, yeah, it's, it, it can haul quite a bit. The tires themselves are only, I bought them in 2018. So coming on six years and they're probably produced. I mean, shit, they're modern, it's a modern production. So what does that say? 17? 17, so 37th week of 17. So, you know, we're talking seven years old at this point. I actually just got a flight the other day driving it. <laughs> That's my spare. That's the flat. Oh, wow. Yeah, driving like 45 miles an hour and it ran over a screw. Oh, dear. I middled it, put the screw right in the center of the tire. Needs to be flat. It's not like a modern tire where it slightly freeze out. They go flat and it's famous. Oh. But it's not hard to fix. It's get a tube for it. There's a company that sells Model A parts up in Mount Airy, 25 minutes up this road, um, Brad's Model A. He's got a tube sit for me, ready to go, and um, you know, I'll go pick it up probably tomorrow or maybe later today. Take the tire off and already tube in it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's right. You just you change the tube, not the tire itself, right? Yeah, the tire, well, it's got a hole in it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Let's see how she rides. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's try to get that temperature down. Yeah. Yeah, so that's called a motometer. And that's made in Boyce, New York. The only, there's people that make, that have made other styles of temperature meters inside of the radiator cap. But a motometer from this era of car came from Boyce, New York, if it was a motor meter. That's awesome. So, and most cars use motor meter because it was just a household meter. So, right before I started this clip, it was running towards the middle of that circle, but I believe we're already coming down a good bit. Oh yeah, it should. It should come down. I'll, I'll rich in the fuel mixture up here with this dial. Oh, cool. Yeah, that, that dial. I, this is my choke rod, but I can also adjust my air fuel mixture with it. That's awesome. So realize this is literally just residential in all schools, so it's a lot. Yeah. It's not a fast car. Don't <laughs> worry about that. Oh, they didn't even stop. They didn't stop. <laughs> she, she wants to stop it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, we're we're dropping temp already, not worried about it. Second gear three speed, right? Yeah we're we're in third right now. Oh we are okay. Yeah. I never went to first. You have to basically stop in first gear um, to uh, to be be able to put it in, or you know, rev match, raise your RPM to what you'd be doing while you're rolling. But it's an unsynchronized sliding gear transmission, so if there's no, you actually physically move the gears in this transmission, whereas a modern transmission, a modern.
modern manual transmission, you are um, you are uh, moving a selector that's grabbing dog teeth. Ah. Like that's what's grabbing your synchronizer rings. And... So, I understand. Oh, I've got traffic lights. Now we're in first, right? Yeah. Yeah, I smell it's a little richer, but help with the temperature quite a bit. And it's running fine, so obviously we're doing it right. Yeah, we're probably leaning out. That's fantastic. You generally don't want to lean it, make it leaner or richer by more than a turn from where you're like factory, you know, set. But I, I just go with how it drives. If it's not making, if it's not making enough power, it doesn't feel like it's having enough power. I'm riching it up, maybe a quarter turn. If it feels like it's smelling like unburnt fuel, I'll lean it out. And, yeah, just go for it. Whatever, it's, it's popping right now. <laughs> it's not right. It, it's just a, you know, it's got vacuum leak all over it. It's got a vacuum leak right here, right into the intake. This is for my wipers, so it's it feels like it's running lean. So that wiper is powered by engine vacuum? Yeah. Wow. A lot of a lot of accessories back in the day were powered by engine vacuum. That's fantastic. Before there were electric motors for those things. <laughs> um, yeah. Most accessories in a car, wiper, um, windshield washer fluid, were all vacuum powered. I'm pushing like you taught me to stay in place and it's working quite well. What? I'm pushing the floor like you taught me so I stay in place, it's working yeah. quite well. Yeah, it, it, it's a, it did make seatbelts for these. Yeah. It was a rope that you hook to the floor here and you pull it over yourself and the person next to you, you hook it to the 